Thank you for tuning in. My name is Karen and I'll be presenting my paper, Designing Up with Value Sensitive Design, Building a Field Guide for Ethical ML Development. This work was part of my dissertation at the University of Maryland's School of Information, and I now work as an economist at the San Diego Workforce Partnership. Let's start with an example. A person may want to participate in a protest without their face being recognized in surveillance video. Here you can see CV Dazzle. It's makeup designed to confuse facial recognition algorithms. These kinds of interventions are important and necessary. And as in this case, they often make quite a point. We do and should spend time designing for lower power actors in socio-technical systems to help th protect themselves against negative impacts of decisions and designs made by higher power actors. I argue that in addition to that, we should be deploying our best participatory, ethically driven, contextually aware design practices to higher power actors as well. This is a yes and proposition. I don't argue that we should redirect resources from supporting lower power actors here, but instead that we can potentially prevent a lot of harmful technology from ever reaching lower power actors like our protesting citizen by intervening with the designers of AI as well. This approach was inspired by Laura Nader's encouragement to study up in anthropology Barabbas et al. studying up using algorithms in this very conference two years ago, and Lily Irani's encouragement to design to intervene upstream. In reference to these folks, I'll refer to this approach as designing up. Say you're a machine learning engineer who's realized there might be a problem with fairness in your training data set. So you go to a popular fairness toolkit. You scroll down to the section on fairness and are presented with this. There's a lot of good stuff here. This website has demos, videos, tutorials, code, everything you could need to implement a fairness mitigation in your project. But there's not much you can do until you understand the problem pretty well. Is the fairness you're worried about individual or group fairness? You're worried about fairness of outcomes or fairness of accuracy? You also need to understand some pretty high level stuff about the solutions, like what's on Manhattan distance anyway. I think we can help bridge this gap by looking at this model of ethical sensitivity. It describes a person who's going about their task, cleaning their training data set, for example, who notices a cue that causes them to recognize, hey, there might be an ethical issue here. So they decide to learn more. They seek out information. They reflect on their options, resources, consequences, stakeholders, and the relationship between the problem and their responsibilities. When they're seeking information, they might go to Google, to their manager, to peers, to a code of ethics to get information. This phrase is called, this phase is called particularization. They use the understanding that they build in this particularization stage to make judgments. The literature recognizes that this isn't totally linear. People often cycle through judgment back to particularization as things unfold or as they learn more. This project takes on these last two activities. My goal here is once someone realizes that something might be wrong, to design a tool that helps them build that understanding and move into judgment, to help them learn about the particulars of their problem, situation, options, and then link them to high quality toolkits like the one I showed you earlier. To incorporate values into the design of this tool and to include the perspectives of those I was designing for alongside those of lower power actors, I selected value sensitive design to design up. Value sensitive design includes three iterative activities, conceptual, empirical, and technical investigations. I practiced designing up in my conceptual investigations. First, I looked at my stakeholders. What benefits and harms could this design have for them? Normally, you might focus on supporting the interests of the same stakeholders that you intend to be your users. With designing up, that's not the case. In this case, I was designing for machine learning engineers, their managers, and educators. So of course I wanted to be maximally usable for them, of course not harmful, and have some advantages ideally over what they might already be using. But the folks whose benefit I really wanna maximize with this design are the data subjects, decision subjects, and underrepresented groups that can be harmed by machine learning. So in the literature review, I read up on the impacts of training data bias, differential accuracy and outcomes, and poorly used and relied on AI for those folks. I also gathered information about what mitigation tools have been designed to support fairness. 
In value-sensitive design, your activities are iterative, so you often come back to the beginning once you've learned more in the empirical and technical investigations. The artifact I eventually designed in the technical in investigations is scalable, so it was no cost to include other values, like, say, accountability and transparency to pick two. I also included options for different definitions of these values so that engineers can understand and select from a breadth of conceptualizations of these important concepts rather than imposing my opinion. Next were the empirical investigations. I recruited 23 data scientists and engineers from across industries and experience levels. Depending on what I was learning through the conceptual and technical investigations at the time and what I had time for, I interviewed them about their particularization activities at work and or ask them to particularize out loud. Those who particularized out loud were either doing so on their own with no tool, were particularizing with a draft that I had designed at that point, or with an existing toolkit. For those whom I interviewed, I asked, have you ever encountered an ethical issue at your work? What did you do? Where would you look for information if you weren't sure about the ethics of something or to decide what to do? And what sources for information about ethical interventions do you trust? When I asked particulars, <laughs> when I asked participants to particularize without a tool, a draft, or with an existing toolkit, I gave them a facial image data set and a hypothetical design goal. After they had time to sit with the data in another task, I gave the following prompt. For the next step, I'll ask you to imagine that after a few weeks of working with this data, you and your team noticed there were a lot more men than women and that there were some skin tones that were not represented well in the data. I asked them to think aloud as they decided what to do and indicate that they could use the internet or any of their own resources. When I analyzed the screen recordings and audio from these think aloud tasks, I looked for information sources they relied on, those they trusted and didn't, what topics they sought information about, and what features of the problem mattered most to them. I'll review the big picture findings here. Of course, there's more in the paper. Participants searched for high-level sources like blogs, videos, and demos, and primary sources like code and academic articles. They were looking for answers to questions like, how does this work, both for the problem and the solution? For the solutions, they wanted to know what they needed to make it work and how the thing worked, or as one of my participants put it, the ingredients and procedure. They looked for fit between the problem and the solution. They didn't need a perfect fit, but what they could make fit with the least effort. Elements of fit they were interested in, in, interested in include the development stage. Does this intervene before, during, or after training? The objective, am I checking or confirming this problem? Am I mitigating a known problem? ML technique was a big one. It's gonna be a lot easier to find a solution tailor-made to image recognition then adapt one from say an LP. Similarly, it's gonna be a lot easier if, if your solution was built for the same type of data that you're using. Each of these features of FIT got a built-in feature of design. Application domain and data types did not. In the conceptual investigations, I included very few mitigations in my search that were narrowly scoped enough to accommodate these. These were things like folks looking for MRI data or um, ML applications in the medical domain. Not only would a controlled vocabulary for all of the possible application domains be difficult to create and update and enforce, even adding one filter, like searching for data type x-ray plus development stage training, would be likely to return zero results, which is discouraging. And finally, technical investigations. You can see the current version of the designed object at the URL up there. I'm gonna go through two features of this, the tool profile and the filters. The tool profile has two pages. The first page has all of the most salient stuff. And then the second profile, the second page has other things that you might need to know before committing, all right, this is the one I'm gonna go forward with. The structure of the tool profile was inspired by participants' particularization behavior. You can see ingredients and procedure over here, and all of these elements of fit um, are filters that you can add and use. You can also suggest edits down here if you find that the profile is inaccurate, incomplete, or out of date. And on both pages of the tool profile, you can see links to view the code or the paper. 
The filters take advantage of the structure of the tool profile and allow folks to explore the world of ethics mitigations for machine learning. This is a result of designing up. If we wanted usability for ML engineers to the exclusion of others, I might have invested a lot in making a very fancy search function. But as it is, the search function is pretty basic. I hope that the focus on filters will expose folks to more ethical topics in machine learning as they search. For example, if I'm looking for um, something to mitigate a known fairness issue in my data, I might select up here, mitigate a known harm, and then down here in ethical concerns, I'll select fairness. But as I'm looking for that, I might notice, oh, I can detect ethical issues in the future or even plan ahead to avoid ethical pitfalls. And oh, I didn't know I could do anything about transparency. That's really interesting. You can also contribute a new tool to the list through a user interface down here. Although the tool is free and open source, we don't, I didn't want people to have to dig through the code or email someone to participate and expand access to ethical mitigations. ML engineers aren't the only anticipated users of this tool. I hope that educators will use it to encourage their students to explore ML ethics and see the breadth of values that are implicated by ML. I hope they'll assign students to practice reading and understanding ML ethics papers by creating two pro tool profiles. And I hope that this allows them to become familiar with a tool that they can use throughout their careers. I hope that researchers will use it to get the word out about their um, ethical interventions. Once the tool becomes more comprehensive, I think researchers can use it to find gaps, that, um, tools that don't exist that can inspire future work. And I hope that managers can use it to enculturate and support ethical sensitivity in their team to avoid catastrophic PR and catastrophically harmful ML. Um, and if they want to, they can fork the tool and tailor it to their team's needs. Big thanks to my programmer, Brandon, who made it possible for others to actually understand and contribute to this project. Um, building a privacy friendly and free and open source project was very important to me and was a key way that I aligned this project with the values of my participants. But actually accomplishing a free and open source project that was useful is beyond my skills. So I hired Brandon and he made it happen. You can see and fork the project at this GitHub address. Um, thanks so much for joining me and I hope to see your contributions to the ML ethics tool. Thank you.